Right. So this is the Associated Press. They did a, a, a really interesting report, which I recommend reading in full called A New Model for News. By the way, all the links from today are on Delicious, um, with the bookmark, let me get this right, OJ70101, but it's, it, the link's at the end. And obviously they're all in this presentation. So Associated Press did a study which actually involved watching how people consume the news. Most of the studies into news consumption involve asking people what they do. The Pew studies are all about telephone surveys and so on, which is useful, but what people say is often quite different from what they actually do. And the questions tend to be framed around expectations. So the Pew study will talk about newspaper websites and so on, but it tends to overlook um, the kind of non-traditional forms of news. And the classic one for me is when people are asked, do you read blogs? And, people, and you get figures like only 5% or 10% of people read, say they read blogs. That's because you, you might be reading a blog and not be aware of it. So, so, so they actually watched what people did. And, they, and this was a global piece of research. They looked at people in the UK, in the US, in India, uh, and I think somewhere else as well. But this, and they had a, a number of case studies. This was Jill in Brighton. And you can see her pattern of news consumption. She looks, which is TV news in the morning, listens to the radio news in the car. Uh, she, but this is a key thing. She checks her email every hour. And when she checks her email, she sees Yahoo headlines. And this is a classic thing that kind of a telephone survey would pick up. It's, it's this kind of incidental consumption of news. She gets text messages. She gets email alerts. She's got a little widget on her desktop which gives her live scores. Then she goes back to radio, and when she's at home, she's watching TV, but she's on Facebook, she's on email, and you've got that kind of multi-channel uh, consumption, almost, of news. And if you go to the next slide, you'll, you'll see this kind of represented in a diagram from, uh, it's actually adapted from a financial Times. <coughs> and this is looking at usage peaks by UK consumers. So you see the same sort of pattern. In the, in the morning, there's a peak in radio listening, then people get to work and they log on to the web, so there's a peak there. They log on to their email, another peak. Afternoon, same thing again. Then driving home, radio, sending text messages, web, TV, text messages. A lot of people send a text message while when they're in bed. That's kind of, that seems to be shown by researchers, people sending text messages just before they go to sleep. Which will keep you awake, by the way, Alex. <laughs> um, I don't know why, but that's just what the research says. So this is what the study kind of found. The found that news is really connected to email. The people get a lot of their news, not just from the emails themselves, but from the, the email service. So if you're on Yahoo, you get the Yahoo news headlines. <coughs> Going back to that kind of um, change from regular times to kind of sporadic consumption, again, this is kind of confirmed by this study, constant checking. People aren't engaged in the news, they're just bored, so I'm going to go on BBC News website and see if there's anything happening. Uh, there's a big factor of lifestyle, so people are sharing the news, that they're coming across news while they're doing searches. And it's multitasked, so people might be watching Channel 4 News, I've done this myself, you're watching Channel 4 News, you're on Twitter talking about it, you're Googling the Israel-Palestine conflicts or whatever to get some contact. Um, there's a social dimension again in terms of news comes to me from other people, so the distribution element is really key there. And news is a social currency. There was a guy, one of the people they looked at was this guy in India. Every night he would basically swat up on the news and he, he had this big whiteboard or something at home and he would like, so he, he, he had subjects to talk about the next day at work. <laughs> <laughs> That's an extreme example of it, but you know, you know yourself, a lot of, one of the main reasons people read news or share news, well, one of the main reasons people read news is to be able to share it. And it's, it's a, a classic example of social currency is a job. Someone tells you a job, you tell it to someone else, and, it, and it, it's, it's social currency. It help, helps kind of reinforce your social circle. Um, it makes you valuable within that circle. Uh, 
Okay, I'll leave an even better example of music. You know, if your person always discovers a new band and you know, you're the other one who always does the mixtapes for your friends or whatever, <laughs> going back a bit, but um, you know, that, that kind it's of... Like Spotify playlists nowadays, isn't it? People yeah. just put those around because yeah. you find bands and you think, oh, this, that looks well with that or whatever, and you sort of spread them out. Yeah. So when, when, when Mux Tape was, uh, an now defunct Mux Tape yeah. uh, was, was created, I remember creating a little playlist and sending it to people. <laughs> And the last point is really interesting given what we used, you were saying, Andy, about this kind of churn of, of updates. Um, readers actually wanted depth. They were news fatigued. They were tired of constant updates without history and context. And if, if you go to the next slide, um, this is the kind of model that they... This is how they kind of mapped out the, the news system at the moment. What they said was there was a lot of updates and a lot of facts, a lot of headlines and breaking news. But there was very little backstory and even less future stories and spin-offs. So they kind of did the headlines, they had the facts, and then they moved on to the next one. They didn't come back to it later, they didn't tell you what led up to this, it was just junk, kind of junk news. Uh, but people actually wanted this, and what this study recommended in the end was that news organisations needed to start delivering depth. This is what consumers appeared to want. They also said that news organisations needed to improve the discoverability of deep content. Um, in other words, you know, once you've got the headline, make it easier for someone to find the backstory, the spin-offs, and so on, instead of them going off to Wikipedia to find out mm. the content. And they also talked about having closure um, to address news fatigue. In other words, and this is a lot harder obviously than it sounds, but people knew the story, but, but they didn't feel that it, it ended satisfactorily. Mm. So they, they kind of wanted a happy ending. It's a very American way of thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, how you do that, I don't know, but I, I suppose the actual, actually following up on a story is a start. Yeah. Don't, don't leave people hanging, basically. Just yeah. don't, you started that, you spoke about that yesterday, what, what happened there? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. interesting in Cass points out, though, isn't it? Because if you give people newspapers, they um, read the first three lines of the story and then they move on. And we always talk, don't write too much because people don't read stories. What they do is they go halfway get down and go, <laughs> and then carry on with the next one. Mm. So obviously they want depth, but they want to choose where that depth is. And it's, I mean, it's, there's, a, there's a kind of, they, people like the idea of depth, but they're not going to use it all the time. It's mm. not really something that they're gonna go into every time. There's, there's kind of two, two pieces of information that support and contradict that. One is that if you look at eye tracking studies, people mm. do only look at the headline mm. in a couple of parts most of the time. But then, it, like I was saying, most of the biggest uh, where people are going is to Wikipedia mm -hmm. and YouTube. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it the way that that story is presented? Are they just reading the first two paragraphs and mm, can, they can see there's not depth in yeah. the of Wikipedia? Yeah, that's an interesting point. 